Almighty God. It is in the name of our Savior and our Lord, Jesus Christ, that we are so privileged and so honored to have you in our midst. And Father, thank you. Thank you for being in the midst of those two individuals whom you have chosen for such a time as this. Father, we pray that all whom you have selected, they will be voted on and become a part of warfare that you will give them the victory. You will give this city and this nation the victory. You you will do that, Father. We thank you and give you praise. We thank you for your leadership, O God. We will follow you wherever you go. We will stand on your word that never fails, that is forever. We thank you and praise you. And speak to us today, O God, in this message. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today's message is entitled, The Church Needs to Take Her Place in a Fallen World. That title kind of minces with what we had this morning with our two guests. And they are, they are bold enough to take their place in a fallen world. And this is God's doing, you all. He knows... every minute of every hour of every day what's going on <clears throat> and he knows what he has planned and we listen to him and for those of us who have matured to the place where we know that God is with us always that he will never fail us nor forsake us that we will not be afraid because the Lord is with us whether whithersoever we go. And, and we just thank him and praise him. We are not cast down because of the time that we are living in. It just bespeaks, bespeaks the second coming of the Lord. And I, I, I hope I'm right when I say this. I, but I believe that we are going to be that group that's going to participate in the second coming of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Our scripture Hallelujah. Every scripture in the Bible is God breathed. It is not from somebody's mind. It is from the Spirit of God. And the book of Proverbs, <clears throat> it was Solomon that the Lord used to give us the Proverbs. The book of Kings tells us that Solomon had over 3,000 Proverbs. We just get 31 chapters, but they are piled with awesome stuff, good things. <clears throat> and what we're getting ready to go through, <clears throat> we must realize that as, as Christians, we cannot condemn anyone. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And the reason why there is no condemnation is because God has given us everything that we have. The righteousness that you and I have was a gift from God. 
The wisdom that you and I have was a gift from God. Redemption itself was a gift from God. And, and I think it's 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 30. For he has given unto us righteousness, wisdom, sanctification, and redemption. We cannot claim any of it, but we can receive it, and we have received it. And so as we go through this, there's a reality that, that we must face. Solomon is the second wisest man in all of the history of mankind. And yet, this wise man slipped and fell. He slipped and fell. But he repented and got back in God's place. But it is really interesting to, to read what he experienced. And, and the experience it is, itself led him to repentance. And he was restored to his place and his walk with God. And God is telling us today, <clears throat> do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not go the way of evil men because there's a lot of them out there. Amen. And <clears throat> there are some who would unfortunately sway because they don't want to battle. They want to go with the flow of, of, of those who are doing evil. But God is telling us, Avoid it, do not travel on it, turn away from it, and pass on, because whatever we sow, we will reap. Whatever we sow, we'll reap. And God is giving us an encouragement here. He says, uh, <clears throat> avoid it, do not travel on it, turn away from it. For the wicked cannot sleep unless they do evil. And they are deprived of sleep unless they make someone stumble and fall. Hallelujah. That's evil, isn't it? Amen. Verse 17, for they eat the bread of wickedness. The bread of wickedness is their, only, is their evil desires. What they desire to do, they partake of it and do it. And, and drink the wine of violence. They don't care who they hurt. They will not hurt us. You all, never forget Psalm 91 and stay in it. Stay in it. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And if we are walking in obedience to God, none of that wickedness will ever touch us. It can't even get close to the shadow of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the path of the just, and that's you and I, because we have the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Not our own righteousness. We've been gifted with the righteousness of Christ. Amen. It's like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. And that's what we're doing. We are growing spiritually, are we not? All of us who are in here are growing spiritually. And we will be growing when we uh, leave here. If God extends our lifespan to 930 years, we'll still be growing. <laughs> Praise his name. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. And this is where God encourages us to pray. To pray for those who are doing evil because the, the end is not good. If they do not come to repentance, they will die in their sins. And if they die in their sins, they will find themselves in the lake of fire. My son, and this is uh, King David talking to Solomon. My son, this is one of the Proverbs from his dad. My son, pray, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. All of God's word is worth listening to. 
it will tell us something. It will strengthen us. It will encourage us. It will direct us. It will empower us. It will strengthen us. It will give us hope in the time of despair. And the word of God will never, ever fail. It never fails. Never does. Verse 20. Oh, excuse me. Do what God says. I should probably have my notebook, you all, so I don't get lost here. Uh, Hey, the Lord and I will get this done. Do what God says. There are times that come in our individual lives that we disobey God. It cost Adam a lot, did it not? It cost him a lot. And we all, again, you all, this is not encouraging wrong, but what it is 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 bringing out the reality of our our failings. We do fall from time to time. That becomes less and less as we grow spiritually. Amen. Because we learn lessons from our disobedience and from our failure. Anyhow, he goes on and he says, hear my son and accept my sayings. And and again, this is the Lord speaking to us. And the years of your life will be many. I have instructed you in the way of skillful and godly wisdom. I have led you in upright paths. That's what Christ the Word has done for us. When we walk, <clears throat> your steps will not be impeded, for your path will be clear and open. And when you run, you will not stumble. Why? Because God is with us, you all. He's always with us. When we lay up on our beds at night and, and, and close out with prayer, Uh, I'm sure there's angels there. They are there to protect us and to keep us. Take hold of instruction. Actively seek it. Grip it firmly and do not let go. Guard her wisdom, for she is your life. And and y'all, we really need to spend time in the Word of God every day. Every day. Because where we spend time is is what is going to be in our minds. It's going to cause us to do things sometimes that we ought not do. And if we're not in the Word of God, we don't know what to obey. And if we're not in the word of God, our spirit man is not going to grow stronger. Okay? It won't grow grow strong without us being in it. We've got to be in it. The word of God is strength to our inner man. But if we don't get into the word of God, you all, we're not going to get what we need. And we will not be strong enough to face whatever the enemy tries to throw at us. And praise God, he already knows that's going to happen. And he will stand there and hold him back. That's our God. We have the wisdom. They are in a time that Christ has not yet come. But the spirit of wisdom is available to them. You know, there's that the seven candelabra in heaven, and each one of them represents uh, an aspect of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the fear, spirit of knowledge, the uh, uh, spirit of the uh, knowledge of good, and it's, it's there. And we have all of that within us. And in, again, in order for that to operate in us, We need to be in the Word daily. We really do. 
I, if I were to set aside God's word and go on what I learned from the past, pretty soon it would be gnawed down. Pretty soon I would begin to lose faith. You know how I know that? Because I've done it. <laughs> verse, verse 5. Get skillful and godly wisdom, acquire understanding, actively seek spiritual discernment, mature comprehension, and logical interpretation. And who does that again? It's Holy Spirit that teaches us. Remember Jesus said when he, uh, he, when he ascends on high, God is going to send back the Holy Spirit, and he will teach you all things and guide you into all truth. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth, says the Lord. Do not turn away from her wisdom, and she will guard and protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Hallelujah. The beginning of wisdom is get skillful and godly wisdom. It is preeminent. And with all you're acquiring, get understanding Actively seek spiritual discernment, mature comprehension, and logical interpretation. And, and in order for all of those to operate, we must call on Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to be skillful and godly. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Uh, make my wisdom eminent, active in my life. Prize wisdom and exalt her, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty and glory, which is literally the presence of God. All right. Thirdly, pay attention to what God says. In verse 20, you will see that God is asking, are you paying attention to me? And he is speaking to Solomon. My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. And he's telling us there to protect our eye gates. But we need to be careful as to what we allow to come in to us. All right? And, and God is just trying to save us from trouble, you all. That's what he's a loving father. There's just no one like him. There will never, ever be anyone like him. He will always be holy. He will always be truthful. He will always be loving. He will always be the strength that we need. When we need to run to somebody, y'all, we're running to somebody uh, without the if in it. If I, he is there for us. He is there for us. We are to put away from us a deceitful, lying, misleading mouth. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And put devious lips far from you. In other words, we're not to be running around cursing. You hear y'all? Those words are from hell. Really, honestly. And we're told over in Ephesians to not let such words come out of our mouths. Let your eyes look directly ahead toward the path of moral courage. Amen. Don't be caught up with friends whom you're trying to uh, make them feel good about you, you know, by giving in to them. You stay with the word of God. Let's keep our eyes looking directly ahead toward the path of moral courage. We're going to be, we're going to be courageous uh, in the word of God regardless of what circle, social circle we find ourselves in. 
and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you toward the path of integrity. And only God has that. Consider well and watch carefully the path of your feet and all your ways will be steadfast and sure. Do not turn away to the right nor to the left where evil may lurk. lurk. Turn your foot from the path of evil lest it will eat you up. <clears throat> One of Satan's, you guys, I, the reason why Satan really hates us so much, there's, there's two things actually. First and foremost, he wasn't created in God's image and in God's likeness. And, and secondly, he is not going to heaven. And he is going to do all he can to take others to hell. He is on that broad road, you all. And he is t t tempting people who are on it. Every believer is going to come front to front with temptation. And at that point, your height of love in God is going to make the decision. Am I going to do what is right according to what God says, or am I going to put this away for now so that I'm pretty cool with my friend? In closing, the essence of God is love. Power is a, a, a protrusion of his love. Forgiveness comes out of his love. Mercy comes out of his love. There is no one who loves in the entire universe than God. There's, there, he's, he, is, he is the source of love. If anyone says, I love God and hates and works against his Christian brother, he is what? He's a liar. We are to love one another. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. You know, and a, a lot of that is, <clears throat> is, is we are... We're not treating God's kids the way we ought to. And, and he's saying that we need to do that. And, and this is the commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also un unselfishly love his brother and seek the best for him. Is that it, Nikki? I want to share one more scripture with you before we go, and it's worth writing down, you all. Let's go to John chapter 14, the Gospel of John chapter 14, and verse 20. One. Verse 21, I'm reading from the Amplified. The person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. That's what Jesus is saying to each one of us in here. The person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to them. You hear that? If we meet this, this, this word, the Lord is going to manifest himself to us. We may see him in a dream. We may see him in a vision. We may even see him in here. But he says, I will manifest myself to him. I will make myself real to him.
to her. God just wants us to not get into the jaws of the enemy. Because the desires of the flesh will surely destroy us. God will hold it back for a while, for quite a while, actually. He has more patience, I believe, than we do. He doesn't give up on us as quickly as we give up on others. But he knows exactly when it's time to give up on on his patience towards us. He is that way. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He is not willing that any perish, but all come to a saving knowledge of who he is. And he is the Savior of the world. And when he died on that cross, he died for the sins of the whole world, you all. He did not commit a single sin. He bore my sins. And not only that, but he died in my place for the wages of sin is death. And then at the age of four years old, I was taught from my teacher about the salvation of the Lord. And I repented, four-year-old, probably from saying something wrong to mom or dad, but repented and received Jesus Christ as my Savior and as my Lord. And here's what happened at the very moment that I received him. I was reborn as you were from on high. The Spirit of God came within me, and I was created. I became a new creation created in Christ Jesus. I am now in Christ Jesus. That's how his righteousness is my righteousness. That's how his wisdom is our wisdom. It, it, that's, that's how all that he is, is in us, is, is, can be in us as we grow spiritually. And as we grow spiritually, you all, our spiritual ears are more open to his voice. Our spiritual eyes are more open to what he sees. And we become that laying of hands on and, 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 and making a decree and the Lord bringing it to pass. There's so many blessings in the Lord. And it takes time. It just does. We are not going to be perfect on this road. I wasn't. But God has brought me a long way. And he will do the same for you. Just never quit. Don't give up. And don't quit on God because he doesn't move at the snap of his, of his fingers. Of your fingers, excuse me. Hallelujah. God is God. Always knows what he's doing. Perfect. Perfect in all of his ways. Perfect in timing. You know, we're getting ready to see a major shift in, in this, this country. And it's going to be the removal of the criminal that's in the presidency now with the man who actually won it. And it won't be long. <clears throat> and once that happens, at some point, you all, there's going to be the glory of God coming forth over all the earth. Or, or, or the uh, latter rain will, will be poured out. I don't know which one comes first. But there's going to be a major shift in this world. And we need to have ourselves ready for it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so expect God to do great things. If we're living upright before him, he's going to use us. He's going to use us in ways that we can't even begin to imagine, y'all. Again, gift upon gift upon gift. The young people will prophesy. They'll prophesy. 
as a gift. You know, everything's a gift from God. Everything that we have is a gift from God. Heaven is a gift from God because it's the righteousness of Christ in us that satisfies our Father. And we thank him and give him praise. God bless you all. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, as I was getting ready for it, I got something out of it. I will always get something out of the Word of God because only God has the Word. And the Word of God never fails. It, it never changes. It is steadfast forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to say we are highly thankful for your word. The word that leads us into paths of prosperity, blessings, success. Your word is like a tree that produces nothing but good fruit and, and blesses us in so many ways. Help us along, Father, at whatever stage we are in, in our walk with you. Encourage us. Remind us to get into the word. Our minds will never be transformed without your word. Our minds will not be renewed without your word. So remind us to get in the word, your word. And we thank you for the life of God that your word releases in our hearts. We thank you, Father. We thank you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.